watch. It's what some are calling a medical milestone. For the second time in history, a patient appears to have been cured of HIV. The unknown patient was originally treated for leukemia and received a bone marrow transplant. The donor's cells had a protein that is known to resist HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. 18 months after the transplant, the patient has no signs of the virus. This treatment cured another man nearly 12 years ago. Timothy Ray Brown was the first patient to be cured, and he nearly died during the procedure. The Venezuelan foreign ministry has declared the German ambassador Daniel Krina uh, persona non grata and given him 48 hours to leave the country now. Um, this uh, was after they said there'd been a series of incidents in which he had, uh, according to Venezuelan authorities, interfered in internal affairs here in a, a crass and unlawful way. That was a, uh, a statement treated by the Venezuelan foreign minister, Jorge Araza. Um, now, the German ambassador, Daniel Krina, was one of several diplomats who two days ago went down to the airport to greet Juan Guaido, the opposition leader who's declared himself to be the legitimate interim president of Venezuela, to greet him on his return to Venezuela and to put pressure on Venezuelan authorities to let him into the country without being arrested. Now, lots of people are asking why the German ambassador, because Daniel Kriener was only one of a group of diplomats from several different countries who uh, went down to the airport to greet Juan Guaido, among them uh, France, Canada, Chile, Brazil, several European countries, the Chargé d'Affaires from the American Embassy. Uh, but they said they have singled out the German ambassador uh, because they said there was a, a repeated nature. This is from uh, Nicolas Maduro's government. The repeated nature of his, uh, what they term, meddling in Venezuelan affairs. Now, he did not attend the inauguration of M Nicolas Maduro uh, in January. He's also, uh, the, the German embassy in Venezuela has previously published statements on its Twitter account uh, saying that Juan Guaido's return, the ambassador hoped, would be a step towards a peaceful and political transition here in Venezuela. So perhaps uh, this declaration that the German ambassador is persona non grata could be seen as a, a warning to other diplomats from around the world, from some of the more than 50 countries, uh, a warning from the Maduro government that they will not tolerate such a stance. All right, Catherine Norris Trent in Caracas, thanks so much for that update. Our breaking news an Ethiopian Airlines flight has crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa, killing all 157 passengers and crew thought to be on board. The airline told state media there were people of more than 30 nationalities among the dead. Now, that includes at least 32 from Kenya, 18 Canadians nine passengers from Ethiopia, among many others. The Boeing 737 MAX was heading to the Kenyan capital, Nairobi, when air traffic control lost contact just six minutes after takeoff. It's not yet known what caused this crash. A recovery operation is underway southeast of Addis Ababa. Responders are out in full force, keeping our Colorado safe. You're looking at Broomfield Police, keeping a watchful eye on I-25. In Brighton, state troopers are positioned to help out any stranded drivers there that have to be out tonight. And let's not forget firefighters responding to crashes and emergency calls out there. This is from South Metro Fire and Rescue as they were out responding to a crash earlier in the day. And still whipping up a storm out on the eastern plains. It's going to be a bad night out there, but conditions will slowly improve in the metro. I'll show you where and why. Coming. Mozambique and neighboring states are still struggling tonight to rescue victims of a deadly storm and reach others with aid. The cyclone killed hundreds when it struck last week, but the dimensions of the disaster are still coming into focus. From above, the destruction is near total and stretches as far as the eye can see. Homes in this Mozambique port city of Beira are now flattened, flooded, and covered in mud and debris. A tropical cyclone tore through this edge of southern Africa on Friday and headed into Malawi and Zimbabwe on Saturday. Jude on the shooting attacks on two mosques in the New Zealand city of Christchurch, 49 people are known to have died. Dozens more are being treated in hospital for gunshot wounds. Witnesses say at least one gunman opened fire on worshippers at the mosques as they were gathering for Friday prayers. Well, one man in his 20s has been charged with murder. Two other men and one woman were detained in the areas around the mosques, but police 
have established one at least had no involvement. Police are investigating reports that an attacker live streamed their actions. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has described the events as an extreme and unprecedented act of violence. Nur Sultan Nazarbayev led Kazakhstan for three decades and his decision to stand down is nothing short of historic in a region where leaders tend to be pushed out or die in office. I'm addressing you today as I've always done in the most important moments in the history of our state which we are building together. But my address today is special. I made an uneasy decision to step down as President of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Under Nazarbayev's stewardship, Kazakhstan's capital Astana became a modern metropolis. A country the size of Western Europe with a population of just 80 million, it has benefited from billions of dollars in oil revenues. But that prosperity has come at a price. While the political elite enriched itself, Nazarbayev's government was accused of stifling political dissent. Elections have never been free or fair, and Kazakhstan has no independent media. Yet Nazarbayev has a legacy he will be proud of. It's been my honor to welcome... He earned respect by dismantling the country's President nuclear Kazakhstan. weapons after the Soviet Union. He also kept a lid on Kazakh nationalism. The country has a large number of ethnic minorities, including Russians. The only president many Kazakhs have ever known, Nazarbayev enjoyed the nickname of Papa, Officially, he will remain leader of the nation, with immunity from prosecution and extensive powers as head of Kazakhstan's Security Council. The government has not given a reason for the 78-year-old's resignation, but the move should ensure an orderly transition of power to prove to Kazakhstan and the world that there can be business as usual without Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Robin Forrestier Walker, Al Jazeera. An American professor has become the first woman to be awarded one of the world's most prestigious mathematics awards. Karen Ullenbeck, professor at the University of Texas at Austin, was awarded the Adel Prize, seen as the Nobel Prize in Mathematics. The jury in Norway cited the impact of her work on analysis, geometry and mathematical physics. This prize was first given out in 2003. The European Commission has fined Google five billion US dollars for antitrust violations, the biggest fine given by European antitrust regulators against a single firm. The Commission said Wednesday that the tech giant had illegally abused the dominance of its mobile operating system Android by forcing phone manufacturers to exclusively pre-install its services such as Google Search and Google Maps. Phone makers that refused were reportedly blocked access to Google's Play App Store. The EC gave Google's parent company Alphabet 90 days to stop such practices or face further penalties. Alphabet has enough cash to easily pay off the $5 billion fine, but the firm says it will still appeal the ruling. A further six people have been detained over the deadly chemical plant blast that killed 78 people in East China's Jiangsu province in March. That's according to the local government. Earlier in April, three people were arrested over claims of negligence. Local authorities decided to completely close the plant in Xiangshui County on April 4th. And they have vowed to continue their investigation into the reasons behind the explosion. Where the oppressive black flag of the Islamic State once flew, yellow is now the color that of the Syrian Democratic Forces, celebrating the capture of Baghouz, the last territory of the self-styled caliphate destroyed. Unused rockets and mortars litter the camp, as do upturned vehicles, a wasteland. And a contrast to the triumphal music at an oil base nearby, coalition officials unveiling a monument to the liberation. We congratulate the Syrian people and particularly the Syrian Democratic Forces on the destruction of ISIS's fraudulent caliphate and for the liberation of ISIS's remaining territory in eastern Syria. Just four years ago, at its height, ISIS had occupied an area the size of Britain, the ultra-violent jihadist group overrunning much of Syria and Iraq. Their leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, announcing that they would rule all Muslim territories. 
and intended to take their barbaric methods to Western lands. Dozens of British Muslims flocked to join them. Several innocent Britons would be among many foreigners captured and executed. That fueled the Allied airstrikes of 2015, and even today the Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt warned that the fight is not over. British forces will remain in Syria with the threat to the West still real. This is Mali's armed forces chief and several top commanders have been sacked after more than 134 people, women and children among them, were killed in an attack on a village. A local mayor says gunmen dressed as traditional donzo hunters stormed Ogasugu, a village of Fulani cattle herders in Bankas in central Mali. They also attacked Wilingara, another Fulani village nearby. Violence between Fulani and rival communities has compounded an already dire security situation in Mali's desert regions. The Prime Minister announced the sacking of the military commanders after an emergency cabinet meeting. Well, let's the European Union, uh, the European Parliament in Strasbourg has just voted to approve major changes to European copyright law. The proposal had moved tens of thousands of Europeans to protest against the measures. Uh, they say they're worried about how new rules will affect free speech on the internet. At the heart of the matter is Article 13 of the legislation. Its proponents claim it would help copyright holders protect their intellectual property. But opponents fear it could lead to censorship. Even as China grapples with containing the outbreak, it's found time to intensify military pressure on Taiwan. Chinese warplanes approached Taiwan on Monday for the second day in a row. Taiwan's defense ministry said it scrambled jets as Chinese PLA planes briefly crossed the sensitive median line of the Taiwan Strait. China then retreated to its side of the line. The day before, China's aircraft had flown near Taiwan's east coast and prompted a rush by Taiwan to intercept. It's two fighter jets side by side. The one on the left is an F-16 from Taiwan's Air Force. On the right is a PLA H-6 jet bomber sent to encircle Taiwan. At 11 a.m. on Sunday, the PLA conducted a long-distance training session with J-11 jet fighters, KJ-500 early warning aircraft, and H-6 bombers. Taiwan's Air Force scrambled F-16 fighters in response. China's war exercises took place as the country grappled with a worsening epidemic. Military analysts said Beijing was responding to recent U.S. military exercises and to the escalation of Taiwan-U.S. ties. 